All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, we are going to do a reaction to a video that popped up on my feed. It's from Andy Hoops called The Most Depressing Ways NBA Careers Have Ended. Sounds interesting to me. Let's check this out. A while back, I made a video on the worst ways NBA careers have ended. In that video, I talked about numerous players from Yao Ming and Brandon Roy's injuries to Mahmoud Abdul Raouf getting blackballed. Rudy Tomjanovich getting hit by a life-threatening punch? In this video, I want to oh, expand yeah. and talk about something else. NBA players who desperately tried to save their careers. Players who kept trying and trying to make a comeback, but nobody wanted them. It got to the point where they were seriously not doing well mentally and fell into a dark place. It started um, to make them question their own self-worth. If they could Yeah, there's going to be a lot of cool players on this list. Um, a lot of really talented players. In fact, they already showed a couple. Odom was, uh, he got picked before, what, um, Carmelo? And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of others. Could not play the sport they love. What's even John worse Wall. is when My you realize God. all of these guys were former stars. Some were at the top of the world before it all came crashing down. Anyway, how's it going, folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's take a look at yeah, four of be the most depressing ends to an NBA career. Stefan Marbury. Okay. In 2009, a video of Stefan Marbury surfaced. In this video... Here, pause. Y'all remember Stefan Marbury in his prime? Before uh, he went a little off the rails? See, he was a badass. He was a badass boy. Video, he was eating Vaseline? Yeah, this is what in uh... the world is going on. <laughs> the man we once knew as Starberry progressed know. into a downward spiral. Not only did his NBA career fall apart, but with his father's death in 2007, his entire life was falling apart. In a rather daunting interview, he tried to reflect back at this period of his life, and this is what he said I wanted to die because I was that depressed and I was that sick. I was trapped in how I felt about how I was treated. I was trapped with decisions that I made. While Marbury went on to have a very successful basketball career in China, the best career yeah. out of any former NBA player, he did. towards the end of his time in the NBA, he had a hard time dealing with it. In particular, his five years on the Knicks, which coincided with Isaiah Thomas's tenure as the president and coach. You got if you're a Knicks fired. fan, we can all agree that this was the worst period in the history of the franchise. Marbury was an incredibly popular athlete, but when he arrived in New York with expectations to lead this team back to the playoffs, he wasn't the guy we thought he was. No, he was he was one of those cases of a uh, extremely talented player, but bad attitude. And that bad attitude just kind of ruined his career. In fact, shortly after his arrival, he started a public feud with his coach, Larry Brown. Yeah, As got the Knicks continued to regress and fall to the bottom, so did Marbury's popularity. New York Daily News even had an article saying Marbury was, quote, the most reviled athlete in New York. Wow. Reviled. <laughs> reviled. That's a hardcore, hardcore word. I revile you. Damn. I mean, I get why everyone was frustrated. This season, the Knicks had by far the highest payroll in the entire NBA, and oh, wow. it wasn't even close. Yet, they also had the second worst record in the entire league. The yeah. worst record in the Eastern Conference. Hey man, you can't buy championships. To say he was the most reviled athlete, it seems harsh, but a lot of folks truly thought that way. Eventually, Larry Brown got fired, replaced by Isaiah Thomas. Oh, and remember that whole sexual harassment case he got involved in? To add on to this, even after Thomas took over as head coach, Marbury got into another feud. When he heard that he was gonna get removed from the starting lineup, Marbury threatened him and refused to play unless his demands were met. Madison Square Garden erupted. Once again, a lot of talent, bad attitude. I mean, you look at Clay nowadays. Clay's not stirring up shit about coming off the bench. He's actually playing better. But not in a good way. Ouch. In several home games, they booed the entire team as the chance to fire Isaiah became louder and louder. 
I get it though. That's why he said he was he's like haunted by his own decisions, you know? Cause he chose to do all this stuff. He wasn't to come off the bench, work his way back to a starter. But instead, he pulled this crap. I refuse to play unless my demands are are, are met. Well, <laughs> Yeah, they're going to trade your ass, man. While this collapse was mostly due to Marbury's own undoing, his father also passed away around this time, which really hurt him. He even admitted Damn. he could not think properly for the rest of his time in New York. Eventually, Marbury would be gone. As he finished out his career in Boston, no other team gave him a chance after well, I don't even remember him in Boston. That. He was deemed as too much of a head case. A coach killer, drama followed him everywhere he went, so no other team wanted to take a gamble on him. Yeah, Suns had him before uh, New York had him, and I didn't really want him here. And the entire time he was here, I couldn't wait until he left. That's why. Mar and it's just because of his attitude. It was fun to watch, but he, I could tell he wasn't good for the team. The locker room was not cool. The um. Yeah, the body language was just, it's all tense. Marbury went to China to begin with, to find himself. He still wanted to be treated like a star and be in the spotlight. It just wasn't going to happen in the NBA anymore. So while his career came to a depressing end, at least he got closure. Yeah. Greg Odin. Well, I mean, I, I kind of wish he covered it, but he went out into China and dominated. So he got a rebirth in basketball. It just wasn't in the NBA anymore. All right, Greg Oden, this is a heartbreaking story. Hey, do you play basketball? I used to. Oh, you used to. I can beat you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what the hell? Greg Oden, while he may not have been a star in the NBA, he was certainly a star for his entire high school and college career. Yeah, he was. One of he the was, greatest prospects of all time. News. A generational talent who was supposed to usher in a new era of big men. A guy who many compared to the likes of David Robinson, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Shaq. We had so, so much faith in him to succeed and revive the center position. Especially during a time when big men were fading away. With the number one overall pick of the 2007 draft, the Portland Trail Blazers drafted him as the final piece of the puzzle. By drafting Brandon Roy and LaMarcus Aldridge in the previous year, and now drafting Odin, this... Um, between him and Brandon Roy, um, if neither of them got injured the way they did, that was going to be a hell of a team between these two guys. These two guys. Um... I kind of feel like Brandon Roy should be on this list, too. I'm curious if he's going to be, because here is a star, an absolute fucking star, whose career was just robbed, just like uh, Derrick Rose. The same idea. Career just robbed because of injury. Trio was supposed to take over the league. Unfortunately, Odin only appeared in two of the six seasons in Portland. As yeah, starting off with the knee, knee surgeries and knee spent surgery? years upon years in as rehab. a young person, this trio managed to play only 62 games together, but they had a ridiculous record of 50 and 12, and that's with Odin not even at his full potential. Prior to the NBA, Odin never had a knee injury before, but before his rookie season even started, he had a season ending micro fracture surgery. Shortly after yeah. that, he got the same surgery on his other knee. That's crazy. Two years into the league, he's what, 20, not even 20 years old? And he's got two bad knees. Like two years. <laughs> Crazy. I bet a lot of you have never heard of Greg Oden because of this. Because in the NBA, he was a ghost. College, big hype. Big deal. In four years from 2007 to 2010, he had two microfracture surgeries, a major foot injury, and his uh, kneecap got chipped. Damn. Maybe his joints were simply too big to handle his massive body. Maybe yeah, the setbacks were too much to overcome. Maybe the fact that one of his legs was longer than the other played a role in his injuries. Oh, wow. It's I didn't really know that. It's really upsetting because Odin wanted so badly to play. He never wanted to accept his basketball career might be over. And after his retirement, he descended into alcoholism to cope with it. 
Damn. Nothing is more dejecting than reading this article from the Indie Star. Odin would stare at the television screen, watching clips of the player drafted number two behind him, Kevin Durant, now oh, a wow. league superstar. The tears would flow. He would watch the old NBA YouTube clips of himself, knowing he shouldn't. He would sob. Yeah, I remember that that time period, like Sports Illustrated and stuff like that. Like it was all Greg Odin and Kevin Durant. He was in college. But yeah, Greg Odin was number one. He was the number one pick. However, despite the premature end to his career, Odin found purpose in a different part of his life. He went back to Ohio State and graduated in 2019 and found a new passion for player development. Really? He finds joy in working with young athletes to reach their dreams and supported them when they're going through adversity. Okay. John Wall. Hell yeah. It oh, seems John like Wall. it was just yesterday when John Wall and the Washington Wizards were tearing it up, and he yep. was recognized as one of the NBA's brightest young point guards. Five straight All-Star appearances, and despite staying relatively healthy for most of his years, by 2018, the injuries hit him like a brick wall. It all started with a freak accident. Wall slipped in his own house and suffered a full rupture of his Achilles, an injury that few players have ever recovered from. Wall sat out two entire seasons. One of them was to recover from the injury. The other was kind of shrouded in mystery. He was healthy and he could have played, but the Houston Rockets did not want him to play, preferring to give minutes to their younger guards instead. It was around this time Wall lost faith in himself and wondered can he ever return back to the all-star he once was. In a span of a few short years, he went from forcing Game 7 against Boston to tearing his Achilles a year later, yep. then losing his best friend, his mother, to breast cancer. Damn. It was a terrible series of events, to which Wall described, That was when I started going to a really dark place. The thoughts would be playing in my head, like, my best friend is gone, and I lost Shoot. the only sanctuary I've ever known, the game of basketball. Not to mention, during all these years, Wall was making over $40 million a year. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, was seen as the worst contract in the entire NBA, not because of his lack of talent, but his lack of availability. He barely played over the course of this massive contract. And oh, he got criticized so much, but it wasn't his fault. Fortunately, not all hope is lost for John Wall. Yeah, I, I never blamed him for that. I think he was on such a high contract that you know everyone was looking to trade him so uh they can't trade him if he's injured so i don't think they wanted him to play and get hurt they wanted him healthy ready for a trade but in turn it looked really bad because it was like what's wrong with john wall you know and he just sat there forever as of this video he last played in the nba in 2023 with the la clippers He's still trying to make a comeback, and even had workouts with various teams. Even if he won't ever be the same player he used to be, there's still a small chance a team could sign him. He was always a great teammate, he never burned any bridges, and he's still a well-respected player in NBA circles. Yeah. And at number one, Magic Johnson. Oh, damn. Most folks are already aware of his HIV <laughs> diagnosis that forced him to retire. But yeah, how many people soon. know he tried numerous times to make a comeback well into the late 1990s? I'm sure you know about his first comeback in 1996 at the age of 36. He didn't play at the same superstar level he's used to, but still contributed enough to get another contract. It's kind of unfortunate he gained a lot of weight during this time. Considering he was making a comeback to the NBA, I'm surprised he gained all that weight. At least that's what he thought. He averaged about 14 and 7, and the Lakers won 53 games. In the summer of 1996, when it was time for him to get a new deal, things started to fall apart. Magic attempted to negotiate with the Lakers for a long-term contract, hoping to play more minutes at point guard. Keep in mind, when he came back, the team slotted him at power forward, because he was too slow to guard any point guards anymore. Unfortunately, the negotiations led nowhere. Even with Magic's connection to the organization and, you know, oh, being yeah. the greatest player <laughs> in the franchise's history, the front office did not want to commit to a long-term contract. 
At this point, the Lakers acquired 24-year-old Shaquille O'Neal in free agency. I don't, can you can you just imagine that how close we were to having Shaq with Magic Johnson? <laughs> that would have been sick, even just for one year. That I wish I could have seen that duo. They were one of the youngest teams in the league, equipped with fast, athletic, energetic young players who they wanted to build their offense around. If Magic was younger, oh, he could run with the best of them. At his older age, he slowed down the offense tremendously. The Lakers simply did not want to go in that direction, and Magic did not want to play for any other team. So that basically ended his hopes for a comeback. But it doesn't stop there. After he officially retired from the NBA, he still had that itch to continue playing professionally. Magic briefly oh, played in Oh, wow. Dude, I watched a couple of these games. I have totally forgot about this. And even tried to create his own basketball league. Yeah. For him, his comeback meant more than you think. When he was forced to retire with HIV the first time, it created shockwaves across the country. People legitimately thought he was going to die. Most folks yeah, we back all then did. didn't know much about For HIV. Real. Only that nope. it could turn into AIDS, and that was basically a death sentence. Yeah. When Magic Johnson got it, we didn't know crap. So we, all of us, all of us kids thought Magic is dying. Like he was announcing cancer, like a, term or a, a terminal illness. And I know it can be, but um, I had, yeah, none of us at that point would have believed it. That it's 2024 and my man Magic is still alive. It's pretty awesome. Heck, even other NBA players became uncomfortable with the idea of Magic coming back. Either way, he proved he could still play, even with oh, yeah. HIV. Anyway, that's all, folks. Those were five of the most depressing ends to an NBA career. Let me know oh, your thoughts in the more. comment section. Do you see guys... Hey, hey, Suns just got Isaiah Thomas. I hope, I hope, that, hope that sticks. I like Isaiah. Um, all right. Like John Wall or Isaiah Thomas returning back to the NBA at some point. It hasn't been that long since they last played, so I certainly can see it happening. I hope he does a part two, part three, because uh, Brandon Roy's got to go on some what, on, on some list, and this is the list for Brandon Roy. Anyways, um, I'm going to subscribe just in case he does do that. Um, yeah, check out Andy Hoops if you like this. I'll link the original video down below. Um, and if you like my content, please shoot me a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, what are some other players that you can think of that had incredibly just terrible endings, you know, super depressing endings like the ones that you saw here? I got Brandon Roy. Don't be mentioning him. Who else you got? All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.